Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Don't you agree? We back with the OG intro. The OGest of intros. Guys. I missed that. It's your boy. Don't you even say it this time. I'm paused. It's your boy. It's ConCon. And sitting across from me, as always, the PR man himself. The man of a thousand names. Justin Baker. And returning once again. I'm back. Russell Allen Magistrate. Yes, he said it. Guys. Of course. I gotta say it. Guys. Mandalorian season two. It's here. We we watched it. It was decent. It it was you know what? I was really dis no, I'm just kidding. I, liked I it. D- hyped as anything. Yeah. I honestly I I am more hyped than I was episode one, season one. Mm, with episode yeah. two. I can agree because of not knowing what to expect on season one. Yeah. And then now we have so much energy waiting to see what was gonna happen. The hype level is much higher. Yeah. And we know it's going to be amazing because season one was epic, right? Yes. Guys, a little bit of housekeeping before we get into this episode, of course. Social media, guys, we absolutely love you. We thank you so much for everything that you do. ConCon's Cantina slash, or YouTube slash ConCon's Cantina, Facebook, ConCon's Cantina, Instagram, at ConCon's Cantina. If you would like to work with us and this podcast, please email us at conconscantina at gmail.com. We have a Facebook group, we have our Discord, and we also have our Patreons. Now, the way that you can support this podcast, Patreon's not for everybody. We totally understand it. Share this podcast with your friends. But our patrons are better people. (laughs) I mean, you know, if we're going to split hairs here, you know. They get numero uno (laughs) spots. There is obviously some pluses to being in the Patreon, of course, as you would think so. One of those new bonuses that we will be seeing tonight is our three dollar tier now so anything that you have subscribed to on the patreon you'll be getting access to the con cons cantina listening outpost and on this listening outpost we are having people call in and leave their hot takes on the mandalorian episodes for the next eight weeks so we have anything in general really yeah we're gonna let it fly oh yeah if you have a hot take on anything like we look forward to hearing about it and including it in the show if you're a patron yeah for sure and guys please once again rate and review this podcast five stars of course, is what we seek. And the reason for this is this really helps with the algorithm wherever it is that you are finding uh, your your podcast. We really, really do appreciate it. Guys, the agenda. And and, and it may seem like I'm talking fast, but there's, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Not much happened this episode at all. <sighs> it was a long episode. Like, thank the force. Thank goodness. It was a long episode, right? Like, 52 minutes. So, We're doing the, if you're new to the podcast and you're finding this because of season two and you're looking for more Mandalorian. Or if you didn't listen to season one and you jumped in later. Yep. We have a different structure. Yeah. So a lot of people, they kind of um, freelance the episode, if that's the best way to put it. They jump around. They talk about their favorite points. Yeah. We take a more chronological stroll through the episode and we hit all of the stuff that we've personally loved the stuff that we maybe did some research on cameos we find guest spots that are awesome we kind of just go through the episode in order so it's easy to track so if you want to then go back you know exactly where we were talking about that you can find what we were referencing yeah and, and what we call this is this is our mando recap so our agenda this week is first and foremost we are going to be having our mando recap then after our recap and all of the tidbits well, that we feel like that you want to know and the things that we appreciated about the show is we will then be following up with the cantina listening post where we will be getting the fulcrum information from our patrons and then yes. we will be wrapping up this episode with relevant news i don't think we have a ton of relevant news but guys poquito we are a cantina podcast. So we're going to go into the cantina right now. Welcome to Con Con's Cantina. What are you having? But remember, no droids. Justin, I am going to let you kick this off. Now, I don't know if you've realized this, but we're 50 episodes in. Yes, we are. And in these 50 episodes, to my knowledge, I have always given the first drink. 
Yeah, you are selfish. Listen, <laughs> calling it how it is. <laughs> I like talking about my drinks, but I want you to talk about this one. So I'm going to flip the camera over to you and don't forget. We're going to talk about camera? where, <laughs> what to do with my hands. Listen, you know what? If you want to just completely, you know, Bobby, Bobby it all, all you want, you know, Ricky Bobby it, that's all up to you. But let's, what are me and you are drinking the same thing? And then yes, we're going to, we yeah. So let's talk about what we're drinking first. So I threw out to our discord this week. Give me some Mandalorian themed drinks, cocktails, beers, whatever it was, wines, even a glass of spotchka, if you would. I this, really wanted to make spotchka. I know. I tried to get dry ice today, and I wanted to add dry ice to our drinks so that we had that like, would have been amazing. Fancy. I know. Should have like one little yes. LED shooting mm -hmm. up into it. But this was from. Uh, we had two submissions. One of them was from Anders, who is a. Uh, a uh, patron and also my brother-in-law his cocktail was a little more fancy yeah let's we call it fancy due to obviously all three we of us working today we didn't have time to get the ingredients let's just say one of the ingredients was creole bitters yeah come on i don't bro. even know where to get that yeah so that would be one that i would love doing maybe we have him on the show and we have him make this for us but Jordan Grip, who is our resident splicer, helps us with our Discord. He's been on the show many times. Shout out to the casual kid. He created this cocktail. This is the This Is The Way IPA cocktail. It's a extremely easy to make and delicious cocktail. I'm enjoying it, that's for sure. Three simple ingredients. Yes. You want a rye whiskey, a sweet vermouth, and a... Oh, yeah, IPA. an IPA. Duh. The IPA. And your IPA Come needs, on, bro. Get it together. An IPA needs... It, it can't be like a citrus IPA or a light IPA. You're specifically looking for a heavy hitter IPA. A double IPA. We use the Botswain uh, IPA that Connor gets from Trader Joe's, which yes. is a delicious, nice, potent IPA. It's two parts... Two parts rye, one part vermouth, one part IPA. Super simple. So I went for a four ounce pour of rye, two ounces of bourbon, two ounces of the IPA, and put it on some ice. And this is absolutely fantastic. The easiest cocktail that I think that I've ever made that tastes this good. Yeah. And the IPA thrown in there is like an awesome little I would like, caveat twist that I'm not used to. I would like to change the IPA next time because yeah. this boats and Wayne, I feel like I'm so familiar with the taste that I, I taste that more. Out. Yeah. I pick it out, but, um, this super what we good. Had. We didn't go shopping for this. This is literally yeah. just stuff sitting around that we use was what made it awesome to make. Yeah. Um, easy seven out of 10 for me. I can see how people would give it a lower score. Cause I don't think that this flavor profile would be for everybody, but for us and like what we like to drink and if you're a listener of the show, you, you know that we like to drink. Seven out of ten all day. I really like it. For ease of use or ease of creation and simple ingredients and the fact that I feel like you could you could tweak this cocktail to what you specifically like just by changing your IPA. If you want something a little uh citri citrusier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want something a little more, more danky malty, a little more danky, yeah. like you could change your your IPA in this and totally have a different drink. So yeah. I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this a solid eight because eight. simplistic gets the job done. It's rye bourbon, which is one of our favorites on yep. the show. It's beer IPA, one of our favorites on the show. And there's no frills. Like it's just like one, two, three, done. Yeah. Super simple. I give it a eight. Russell. Eight Mandos. Covert approved. What are you Ooh. drinking? Well, mine is, like Justin said, pretty simple. I woke up this morning old school. thinking yeah. it was going to be like a fun Friday. Oh, my God. Mandalorian season two. Uh -huh. Worst day. Very busy. Needed something to kind of pick me up because I was just exhausted. So went back to the good old college Jägermeister, Jägerbomb. That's a trap. <laughs> can be it can be it can be but i do mine a little different i know some people like to you know do the whole drop of jaeger into the red bull and Shot shoot glass. it mm -hmm. yeah. but if you look it up the first thing that pops up it's like it's mistakenly known as a shot but actually it's it's a cocktail it's a cocktail yeah. and people sip it i love sipping it i'm probably going to be sipping this the entire show tastes like candy to me i mean it's got that licorice of course with the Jager yes Meister. love the licorice me personally but it gives you that nice little bump <laughs> of energy because it's got that red bull yeah exactly so, 
I can't. We talked about this off mic a little bit. I cannot take or taste Jaeger without flashing back to college being days, University of Florida, visiting uh, Liz's best friend as she's in school. Jordan is dating slash maybe freshly married to Monica, and we are college party crazy. I was drinking uh, Jaeger and Dr Pepper, which is horrible i've yeah, never had no. jaeger and dr pepper i mean i love horrible. dr pepper and i love diet dr pepper it's like the only Ugh. diet drink that i like yeah that Don't does do not it. sound good no but it's, 22 I, is like great idea can't yeah good. imagine jaegermeister with dr pepper because not good because your older friend gets you the jaeger and you can get the dr pepper <laughs> yeah uh, exactly yeah. russell 22 mando score oh man this is a solid 10 this, oh my God. <laughs> hey, this is opinion. This guy's the most <laughs> true, true, true. Okay, this is you're, opinion. You're, you're not wrong. Streak. He's got to keep the streak. He's got to keep the streak. Let, yeah. That and the fact that this has always been one of my favorite drinks. I don't want to take too much time, but can I tell a quick little story? Yeah, yeah go, go. So we were going to a party <laughs> okay. back, in, back in the day when I was, I and my current wife, Whitney. Did you make her a lemon drop? <laughs> no. Um, we were going to a house. We ended up actually it was a mutual friend of ours, but uh-huh. it was a dry party because he was, you know, recovering and all that. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> so you brought Jaeger <laughs> like, No, 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 no. Obviously, I made Jaeger bombs. Story. This is the story. So I was like, there's dancing here. There's no way I'm going to be able to mac on my future wife, Whitney. Okay. If I don't go to the liquor store and buy some drinks. Yeah. Well, my go to back liquid then, courage. Right, liquid courage. My go to back then was Jaeger bombs. I just like to mix them and kind of sip on them all night. So I go to the store, I get the stuff, I come back, I'm like, hey, yo, guys, come out to the parking lot driveway area. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. let's water bottle this junk. Parking yeah, yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking we make it, we put it in the water bottle, and we take it. It looks it inside. exactly the same as water. Yeah. <laughs> Brown, clear, it. you know. You know, no one will no one will care. They won't know. Anyway, so I make it uh-huh. and I pass Doo-doo it to my me. future wife Whitney, you know. Before I can turn around uh-huh. and, and basically get a, because I thought we were going to share it, yeah, she downs the entire water bottle of Jaeger Jaeger bomb. Oh, to this day, no. that's how I knew. To that's this, <laughs> to this day, she, you know, because she's a dental hygienist, she's not a nurse. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. doesn't nurse any drink. In fact, I don't give her a drink because I know it'll be gone. She just, she likes some pe- some people are like that. Hey, was that hold on? Was that a very bad pun joke? Yeah. She's a dental hygienist, not a nurse. She doesn't nurse any drink. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I'm a dad now. Did you guys yeah, know that? Yeah, so he's got he's got the dad jokes on cue. <laughs> I got him uh, I got a list. No. Edit this out. And yeah, I love it. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, I tell this story a lot. And I, I haven't I told it don't. because of the pandemic and because we don't like go out and go to parties anymore. Yeah, yeah, pand- exactly. This is the first time I've told the story in a long time, like probably yeah. eighteen months. I like you revert immediately back to the Jaeger bomb, you're like First time hanging out. I was neither. tired. All right. This no, no, it's fine. Boost. Uh, it like does. I said, I, I, I like, like I like the Jaeger bomb. Uh, so ten out of ten. <laughs> they, you know what? When ten out of ten Mandos for, for me. And 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 you know what? To, the to, Mandos, to that point, to the Mandos, it could be it, a high, exactly. a high rated drink. I exactly. have to give that to him. Yeah, yeah. To that point, we were just talking about that a couple episodes ago. Where like sometimes we let our own ideas get in the way of what we think about these drinks, and yeah. really, it's. The whole point of the rating it's scale is what's it what's it doing down there? Yeah, it's in a the... combination of where it sits with yeah. flavor profile yeah. and what it is, as well as like, can you see a Mando drinking this down in the sewers in the covert in hiding? But then, according to every drink ever, if you get sick on it, which I know plenty of people that have gotten sick on Jägermeister, oh yeah, oh, yeah. you can't even smell the stuff. It's a very, no. very, very potent aroma and yeah. taste when you ha- when you have Jäger. Guys, I think it's time to start talking about this oh, episode. My God. Are you so sure? Ready. This is going to take a while. Let's do it. We're going to get right into it. Mandalorian Season 2. Already love the detail. Chapter 9. We didn't go into Chapter 1 of Season 2. It's the continuation of the story. So already we're, we're Chapter 9. Chapter right? 9 is an awesome... Yeah. Yeah. So the title of this episode, The Marshal, directed by John Favreau. So we are going to go Written ahead... and directed. Written and by the man who created... Did, who did not direct a single episode of the first season which is crazy True. i don't think he wrote did he write i guess maybe he wrote one of the first season episodes but i'm not sure let's get into the recap mando and baby yoda appra- approach the city gates under the cover of nightfall red-eyed creatures completely lead the way he is there to meet gorsh koresh who is the 
a person that the Mandalorian is looking for. Gore Koresh. Gorsh. Gorsh. Thank you. Gorsh. I, I saw the the sh at the end, and it it all it all Gorsh. went together. Gorsh. It's, it's a Star Wars it's name. Yeah, guys. Exactly. It's a Star Wars name. Come on. After entering the arena, we are seeing Gamorrean guards fighting in a ring. With or in this case, I guess they're not really guards, but they're Gamorreans. Could have been. They're Gamorreans. And we also Could've get a, a sweet, quick, glancing cameo of uh, Constable Zuvio, which was an awesome little nod to an amazing character that got ripped out of Episode Seven, mm-hmm. And he originally was supposed to be a major character post they took him out but he's since get, gotten like a full comic book line and he's like this awesome cool little character and they give a nod to him he's in there his head's down he's almost got a cad bane looking hat like big wide helmet hat mm-hmm. and if you notice he's like head down when the when they're panning through the crowd sitting next to koresh mando explains that he is looking for other mandalorians koresh of course tries to kill mando with his henchmen this is nothing for Armando. Quote, tell me where the Mandalorians are, and I'll walk out of here without killing you. This is no End place quote. for a child. <laughs> after dispatching all of the henchmen, Mando runs out after Koresh, who has escaped. Speaking of Koresh, did you catch who he is that voices this character? This is another famous actor. Tell me who it is, and then I'm going to tell you about the species. Okay. So this is John Leguizamo, okay. which if you saw any movie in the late 90s early 2000s or if you've seen ice age oh you yeah know okay. who john leguizamo is yeah, so he's in uh he's what's, in who, what's he in ice age he's sid he's the voice of sid in ice age man yo you're alive <laughs> and he, i don't know why i yes, just did that i didn't know john that was him Le- yeah that's if john you didn't leguizamo. Know who sid was now you do now you know so yeah like in the 90s he was in like this might not be a movie everybody's seen but spawn yeah like another classic comic book movie he's the big fat guy in spawn he's uh why can't i think of what's the comedy movie i wrote it down here where is it uh the pest oh okay yeah that's him yeah yeah, like, yeah he's like a classic like he's an awesome actor who has now migrated into voice acting yeah and it's like i love just they throw a character like this in so low-key don't even give him a credit but like he's more hyped about being in star wars yeah exactly what is his species so the species is this is called an abyssian so mm-hmm. the Abyssians were seen in A New Hope in the Mos I, uh, Mos Eisley Cantina scene. Mm-hmm. Um, they looked a little bit different yeah. in seventy seven. Um, a the, lot more practical effects. Yeah, the very low budget, l- like thinner face. Same species. I mean, you know, you can have species in the Star Wars universe. They all look different. You know, same species, but they look different. But the first time that we did see the Abyssians was in seventy seven, and and I like how there was some other um, species that we saw in this ring scene. Mm-hmm. Remember the voice, the the voice acting character that uh, Hamill did in Rise of Skywalker, the guy with the horns that came around yeah, yeah. and Kylo like, cuts like his head off. Mouth. Yeah, there was a. It looked like a female species of that same kind, and I didn't do the. I didn't get a chance to do the research when we, after we watched it, but um, there was a ton of species that we had already seen beforehand and then you know having some reoccurring ones which yeah, i really it, liked it felt like another cantina scene where you just get kind of bombarded by a ton of cool stuff yeah, exactly like these cool aliens and species things you know things that you feel like you know but they're like done differently yeah like one of the things i remember when we talked about the trailer of this and we just had a quick flash i was wondering i was like man he looks like he's practical effects but then he looks off. And now watching this episode, I feel like he was done in practical effects, but his mouth was CG. Because his mouth is moving too fluidly. It de- and the for- eye the eye looks real, the way that the yeah. eye moves. Because it's kind of like off in a way where the tracking is not perfect. Yeah, where- like, it's like this was like CG captured yeah. right in this, in the mouth area as he's talking. I'm, I'm like getting off mic because I'm trying to yeah. gesture. I wasn't even <laughs> trying to give you a hint. I was adjusting my own mic, but yes. <laughs> but like, it's cool. I love that they have the ability to do this now. They can make these, the aliens that look so good in practical effects. Yeah. But when they, when they talk like that, mm-hmm. like oh, it was just an open flopping thing that they had in the 70s. It looked cheesy. Yeah. Now they can make these hybrids and it's awesome. And I... I liked the feel of this guy, um, Koresh, too, because we kind of have this reoccurring theme of like mob boss, mm-hmm. crime syndicate. Crime syndicate is the word I was going to say. And, yeah. and he's totally, he's got to be crime syndicate, you know, of some sort. You know, these are the people that have that, that type of knowledge. When we were watching 
the trailers for this episode, which was pretty cool to see all these mm-hmm. scenes from the trailer. Because I'm sure if you're like me, we've watched the trailer like 30 yes. times. I thought originally Should we watched the episode like three times today alone. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I thought it was John Favreau originally who was voicing this. Yeah, which you know it's always cool to see. You know, like M Night Shyamalan was always pride. in every one of his movies. But yeah, it's yeah. nice to to see a fresh face. Um, but as far as the animatronics go, obviously the technology's gotten so much better than it was in the seventies. Yeah, and there probably is a guy like over in the corner with a remote control, like controlling every little bit of his face. And uh, we saw a lot of that in the gallery. That there's mm-hmm. three people in total. Yeah. At, at well, five people in total, but there's three people with remote controls for Baby Yoda. There's one that does the ears, one that does the eyes, one that does the mouth, and then there's puppeteers for the arms. Mm-hmm. And then they ha- usually have somebody in green screen. Oh no, no, no. He is remote controlled too. Like he can actually walk. Anyway, we're getting. Super they probably have like but... a few different models of Baby Yoda. One for yeah, sitting for sure. in the pod. One for, for sure. walking. And, yeah. And then animatronic or um, animated as well. CG. Yeah, they got to have some stuff for him that's CG. So back to the recap. Koresh, of course, is he's trying to escape, right? So his henchmen get they get dispatched Our boy by takes Mando. Him out. Oh, easily. I love how us. he walks away. He's like waddling away. Dude, he, I, yeah. he reminded me of Patrick. He's <laughs> like, oh, oh, like from SpongeBob. Like I don't know uh-huh. that. Yeah, he he totally got me when he Patrick. Was, yeah, he was running away. That one got me. Our boy crushes him. Yeah. Um. So whistling bird crazy. Dude, he, the the way that he dealt with I'm the not henchmen. Gambling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just yeah, but we get the 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 scene. So Where did much he get of new this whistling birds. Well, that was she, from the armor. Where did yeah, he get Yeah, but those? I think she I think it's implied that she gives him extras and that's why Restocked. she says use them sparingly, you know? Like I can't imagine she's like, "By the way, you got you got nine of them. I just like, that's that. I mean, that's a cool little... Like, well, and we kept track of them in season one. Yeah, we one. were counting like, we each one that she used in that episode. Yeah. So it's cool to like to kind of... I don't know. I like the logistics of the universe. Like, yeah, where yeah, do you yeah. get those if they were so rare? Yeah, and I'm at the same time, they exposed themselves on that lava planet, whatever that was. So most likely, they don't have any foundlings. Because remember, he said he was going to like save some Baskar for the foundlings. You know, this is the way. There you go, right there. So... It's possible that he had some extra Beskar laying around. Uh, We were actually talking about that because Justin had an epiphany. Yes, a a feel-real-dumb moment. Explain that real quick, just based on what he was saying with the Beskar. Okay, this is a conversation I think we... Me All and three Niles. and Niles have like we had that. Yeah, we've had this multiple times. Like our boy gets his new armor in season one, and we're like, I think that why that is episode, the thigh the plate? next episode like his thigh is like the same as it was before, and we're like, what the heck? We thought it was a continuity error at the time. Or we they just never really addressed it. When in reality, we're just all three freaking idiots. Yeah, do you know like so obvious? When he says, no, set this aside for the foundlings, Mm -hmm. he literally takes some of the armor to complete his set and gives it to the foundlings, gives it to the armor, and that's why that one piece of his armor is not not Beskar. It's his leftover piece. And is it still that way today? Yeah, it's still that way. It's still that way even. so. I I had that epiphany, and I'm like, I'm an idiot. (laughs) Like I I literally, it's one of those hindsight moments where you look back and you're like, how did I not see this? How did I not realize this? It bugs me so much. In fact, I realized that six months ago. It's, no, it's fine. In Batman-esque fashion, we have the most amazing nod and callback to season one, chapter one, where Mando is wrangling up Koresh, hanging him from the light Dude, pole. such a callback to the first episode. First episode, season yeah. one, first episode, season two. My favorite favorite yes. scene of the entire season was yep. that scene definitely not a coincidence they then work out a deal where he will then give him the information to find his missing mando with the most amazing guitar riff ever yes. as the fight scene starts no i was just gonna That's say really that big. you know matching the very first episode of season one yeah i think it was i hate to call out star wars theory but he recently put all the um uh, the making of episode one and two and three. And yeah, it yeah, gives yeah. you a lot of insight to what George Lucas kind of wanted to do with the prequels. He wanted them to rhyme like poetry, visual poetry. So it's probably what Jav- John like Favreau Hamilton? was. Like Hamilton? Yeah, like Hamilton. <laughs> Stop. Except good. <laughs> anyway. How dare you, sir? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, no. I, He's it, visually rhyming just like Lucas would have wanted him to. Yeah, now, no, that was does, my yeah, point. Does that sit well with you guys or does it not? Oh, I love oh, I it. Love, I don't yeah, know, yeah. Like, it's, it's just a trait of Din. Like, this is his move. Yeah. It works. It's a trained, yeah. it's a muscle memory thing <laughs> for him. It's how he kills. It's, 
grapple yeah. Mandalorian grapple skill. reel him in like that's a muscle memory like this is something yeah. he was probably trained a thousand times growing up being trained as a mandalorian after the mando is given the information that the mandalorian he seeks is on tatooine he lives he leaves uh karish for dead mando then oh, flies gosh. back oh, we didn't talk about the red eyes what the oh yeah okay those? so do you want so okay we were talking Connor about this yeah i have a theory who's the dodo that thinks they're loath cats <laughs> me I mean, he the city, scratched the that city guy looks really bad. The city could really look like Lothal. Yeah, it does. It does like I'm the graffiti. Give you that. I give you the graffiti. The buildings. Yeah. If you look at the buildings with the lights on the it, top, yes, yes, they look very much like um, Rebels Lothal. This is the first time we don't get named where we are, isn't it? Every other time we've had some type of like a it's no, cut, yeah, like it says Navarro, a, a cut of a planet with like yeah. a, and that started in Rogue One. Actually, is where that started. Yeah, where they yeah. were like Edu, kind of give you a sense of the largeness of the star wars galaxy yeah well to to me the when they're walking up and like we said the graffiti some of the graffiti we saw there's a lot of um nods to nods history, and easter yeah. eggs and it, like mm. we saw something that c-3po has to be c-3po like there's no to, way yeah. there's no way that's not c-3po there's stormtroopers you're gonna be a permanent troopers. resident goldenrod <laughs> there's also boba fett's fern his fern mm-hmm. signet yeah in yeah. in the in the graffiti anyway yeah. vader loath cats uh have been portrayed in different ways in in star wars books and in film tv a, a, yeah in in rebels mostly and galaxy's edge kind of like a, a a trash panda a raccoon a cat you know obviously a cat mostly but to me i just i think it would be cool if we find out later that they're like, like maybe mando maybe. just says back when i was on lethal and i left what's his face for dead i'd be like ah you know i don't know i just i would like it to be loath cats i don't I care think, if they they looked more I, ominous than i never got the like uh, but they the changed like, how we saw Gamorrean guards now. We kind of saw Gamorrean guards yeah, as fat and still, lazy. They were still warrior. They were just lazy warriors. Yeah. Anyway, my hot take is I think that it's Lothal, and I I hope that it's Lothal. I anyway, hope I hope Jawas. that it is Lothal. <laughs> that would be super cool. I mean, Jawas? Rolls. Come on. Glowing red eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I Hey, we don't know what they are. Well, hopefully we find out. Uh, After Mando is given this information, he then flies to Tatooine. Once he lands on Tatooine, we meet up once again with Pila Mato. And he gets out of the crest. Oh, the- you, this does not okay. definitively right. answer it. Are we this still arguing about the, the yes, fact crest. that it's a no. razor crest? No. Is the, the name crest. of a ship nah. or the type of ship? Yes, the we crest. are. It's first of all, it's called the Razor Crest. It's the name of the freaking ship. The can we drop crest. this? The <laughs> not Falcon, until, not Millennial. Not until that's never been the name of anything. Millen, mul, 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 Millennial. Mul, 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 <laughs> I'm just gonna keep stuttering on purpose. Anyway, so I had we a meet point there, but I, I can't I accept, remember what I it accept was. that I won. You did oh, not win. I have a point. I have a question. Yes. Previous episodes that I've been a part of, you guys have had or shown angst concern for the fact that we're visiting the same planets over and over again no yes. not us me. no 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 just him. That's me. okay just just yeah me. let's get that tr- for the record straight <laughs> that's me yeah that's so how just did him. you how did you feel when he's like tattooing you're like ah oh, tattooing again yes or no long pause <sighs> mr long pause. justin long pause they gave a legitimate reason to go back i wish they would have picked a different planet in one fashion but they at least had oh my god story and a somewhat of a reason to go back there yeah i i, it's I still thought of my you. favorite thing. i thought of you initially when i heard tatooine I'm it's like, a lot of fan service when you go to tatooine it's so much fan service that even like a a surface like ah oh, yeah i like star wars they see tatooine and they immediately they can like associate where they are and i think that goes a long way that they need to do that just enough and if this is the only episode that's like a tatooine centric episode that would be fine i'd be fine with it what was what was the planet of the first episode of mandalorian i'm drawing a blank navarro was the ice planet no it's the ice planet the cold planet where he goes to get the bounty that's the first planet we see in season one chapter when did we go to tatooine was that like episode two or three episode five gunslinger yeah so yeah not poetry no (laughs) 
Uh, I, I'm I'm perfectly fine with going I back to too. Tatooine. There's a lot of history but on that, Tatooine. But it also makes no sense because it's such a pointless planet. But why does everybody go back there? Well, we're getting to the entire point of this episode it's as to force. why we're on Tatooine. I know. There's reasons. Like, it's my a goodness. force yes. nexus. All right. Let's move forward because <laughs> it is. It's a force we're, nexus. We're tangent. So once uh, Armando planet. lands, we meet Pella again. And no doubt after the death of IG-11, pour one out for the boy, oh, IG-11. Our boy's up there. I don't it, know if that's he, on camera, if that shows. It's not, no. but um, he lets the uh, pit droids work on the crest, which is super awesome. He changing, all his, has, changing his vibe on droids. And she even comments on it. She says, oh, look, you know, now you know now he has affection for droids. All he had to do was hit the nose, and it would have stopped. <laughs> Mando, again, explains that he is looking for more Mandalorians, and he explains that he needs to find them to help with his quest. And he is also looking for a city called Moss pego as r5 moseys on out as lazily as it ever can the r5 callback cannot be <laughs> it's awesome it's yeah. even got the oil stains yeah from where he when blew i the... first saw him I'm like oh it's the same model is it the same one but then when yeah. you i mean they purposely yeah oh yeah them. for sure yeah like, look at that oil stain guys. over the headshot and you can see like the explosion. right where the motivator yeah and then justin you or connor one of you i think it was justin is like oh don't don't hurry, you know, take your time. Yeah, yeah, she, Pella yeah. goes, she's like, you know, take your time. It's it's hard to find help these days. I don't even know where to no complain. No motivation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I like that he, he comes up and he brings up the map of Tatooine, and it kind of reminded me of how BB-8 and R2 yeah. both do the same thing. They kind of display that map. I, the I really, map before the war? Isn't that what she said? This is how... Yeah, well, during the Empire. From, okay. During the Empire before... Oh, no, no. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they like, said before the war. Yeah, something this is like how, that. Oh, yeah, like this is what our planet looked like before yeah, it the was, fall of the Empire. Yeah, it was old. So f so five years ago. So uh, after the R5 callback, uh, Mando borrows Pella's old speeder, and he sets across the planet in search of the city Mos Pego. Swoop bike gang. Upon arriving into the city, things look pretty bleak. He enters into the cantina. Shout outs to us. Just saying. Um, and he asks the bartender about a Mandalorian that he's been told about. So when he is idling through that town. Yes. I just slid Russell my phone. Uh-huh. There is a cameo that uh, is amazing. God, what is this cameo? My Who God. is it? I don't even recognize him. That's look, what I said. I knew this was going to happen. Look closely at his face. I just sent it to him. There is... I've been making a, out with him. I'm, I'm close as I can get. Video game, as well as voice actor cameo. Very. Sam Witwer? Yup. Really? What? With Let me long see. hair? Sam Witwer, who Dude, is. I got his uh, autograph on Galen on Merrick. Unleashed. Galen Merrick, or better known as Starkiller in Force Unleashed. And even probably more well known. Dude, that doesn't matter. The work. voice actor of Darth Maul. Yeah. It's, am, I the, am I the only one? It's I in mean, the credits. I honestly took Look a at the cheekbones. Guess. Look at the cheekbones. It's in the credits. First of all, Sam Whitmore has never had hair, so it's hard. It's a wig, bro. It's literally yeah, Hollywood. I've never I seen him with hair. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard sell for me. Does dude, it literally... in the credits. He has I understand it's in the credits, but that doesn't mean it's this <laughs> dude, bro. Yeah, it well, is. It's it's the dude. I, I see it. If you don't doubt me, Google me. I mean... Google it. Go Google it. Google me. I don't, mean, don't ever Google yourself. That's like a big no no, <laughs> by the way. This Same. podcast comes up when you Google me. But how cool is it? Like, they're again including like these video game and voice actors, like just to get back. Where's the camera? Sam Whitworth is a huge You're on. Star Wars fan. Oh. Dude, that one. Whoa, there he is. It's not going to focus on yeah, that. Well, it's, it's zoomed in, so it's kind of blurry. Yeah. That's our boy. Look, That's Star Killer. He's taking down a Star Destroyer right now. Don't look at my dirty thumbnail. <laughs> Oh my gosh okay <laughs> gives a whole new meaning to that's thumbnails. so cool like i love that they like include like they look for ways to include the people who are proud of what they did in the universe mando then asks the bartender about a mandalorian this is the reason why we're here right he's looking for more what does he look like he what does he like look me. like <laughs> yeah doesn't know what he looks like the bartender explains oh you must be talking about the marshal mm -hmm. does the marshal wear mandalorian iron well i don't know who thought of this or do you see for yourself and uh, he looks over, and there we see the skinniest of Boba Fett. Yes. Oh my God! Same, same path we all as like it. the the hipster, the hipster uh, malnourished stormtroopers in the first season. Yes, this is hipster malnourished Boba Fett. Give me his diet, cause I need to lose some weight. I don't know if I want to lose that much weight. Okay, we did. We had some concerns. We legitimately <laughs> thought like. 
does Timothy Oliphant have, have cancer? cancer? No, for real. Like, we were legit, like, no. Timothy's looking, because we, we watched Justified, yeah. and maybe it's the suits, but Timothy has never looked that skinny, so I actually had to, like, Google and, like, oh, has Timothy been sick? Like, it's just something that I didn't know, but, but, there's, but I couldn't but, find any information. But can we take a second to talk about, number one... How good is his hair for taking off a helmet? Oh my gosh. How good looking is he? The it's dude called, makes me feel like a sack called, of crap. It's called cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If anybody has Make ever worn up. a bucket, a helmet, a cosplay helmet, a motorcycle helmet, a baseball hat, dude, it's anything. Alpha, well, you remember the when. The second you take it off, you have like oil matted hair. Well, you he remember. Took so perfectly salt and pepper quaffed into the air. <laughs> I'm like, this guy. He's a good looking guy. Anyone, Pedro took off his helmet and. Uh, he looked real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, was yeah. like, dude, helmet Pedro's hair. Pedro's like, ah, oh, there it is. Helmet head. Well, we kind of get this vibe, like, you know, and we'll get into the rest of the scene, but he doesn't have his helmet on a lot. So maybe, like, right before he walks up to the door, he put the helmet on, you know what I mean? And that, that is true. You know, that, that, that could be true. a possibility. Pedro never takes a thing off. This scene in particular, this was one of my favorite scenes. So. The mysterious man, they, they have a conversation. He Mando explains to him, you know, I've been looking for you for many parsecs. And um, Timothy Oliphant, the marshal, um, explains to him, like, hey, let's have a drink. He walks over, and he removes his helmet. And in this very scene, Mando completely stops in his tracks. He understands that this is Jolt, not... like... Stutter, literally stops. Like, yeah. yeah. This is not the Mandalorian that I've been searching for. This is not the way, literally. Like, this is, this is not who I've what been looking the for. Heck? The mysterious yeah. man removes his helmet. He then explains that he is aware of the reputation that Mando, as a Mandalorian, should have being a good killer, and that he knows that he is not happy with him wearing this armor. But he's also confident, which was impressive. Yeah, because like, and, and I like the conversation they have where he's like, "I'm assuming one of us isn't walking out of here." Mm -hmm. And yeah, then he, he you know he kind of goes to stand up, but but he never puts his helmet on. Like he knows Dinjarin is probably going to shoot him in the head, but he's like, yeah, it's kind of uh, like, yeah, and that's yeah, poor choice, yeah, poor choice. Even yeah. when he's on the bike, he's never putting his helmet on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so the opposite of a Mandalorian. My second hot take of the episode. Okay, send it. I am so excited. If you notice, you love Timothy Oliphant, don't you? Listen, I love him. He's a good-looking guy, Rand. I'm just like he. Anyway. Also, for the rest of, rest of the episode, we're going to refer to him as Elephant because we keep mispronouncing his last name. No, 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 Elephant. Elephant. <laughs> Boba Fett on his armor, on his chest piece, oh, has his feather. own signet. Oh, yes, this is good. I like this. It is a fern. fern. It is a fern leaf that Boba Fett has. This is his signet. Mm -hmm. Mandalorians had had symbols and signets beforehand but signets have taken on a new meeting when it comes to the mandalorian so in season one it becomes a point of the 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 armor appointing this signet to, for the family to mando my hot take is that boba fett had to adopt the new mandalorian creed mm -hmm. after we see the events in clone wars Django didn't have it Django didn't have it because this wasn't before the great purge and so after the Night Great Purge, a thousand tears. when they had to actually start hiding and their strength became in their in in them hiding in their secrecy where their, the their strengths. Yeah. Covert network. This could be something where Boba Fett has not he, – he hasn't been taking off his helmet. We never see – we never see him take off his helmet the in the original Luke. movies, right? So this could be – are you, you going to die? <laughs> Don't spit out your beer. <laughs> oh man jaeger uh, in the nose wow well Sorry. this is ruining my entire amazing hot take basically boba fett adopted the new creed and boba fett is a legit mandalorian based on the creed just like din Djarin, and he I wouldn't have taken his helmet off unless he got thrown in the sarlacc pit of which i was actually hoping that he was really dead and we were gonna have rex not boba fett but that's a whole nother thing anyway uh, you got angry at me for when i said it's fine if he's dead I did, but I really do just want Rex. I thought he was dead up until the very last second. <laughs> I think that's such an awesome take because it shows Django was not of that. His helmet was off all the time. Yeah. There was no family crest. Poetry. I love the idea of what that would mean that Boba, which they never really gave any, like... Because th there's, pro there's proof that shows that he could be doing this in the movies that he's in because we don't see him without the helmet. And mm -hmm. this takes place after... The even Clone the, Wars. Even in Jabba's palace, he's just chilling, standing there with his, helmets on. Yeah, and I love, I love the idea. Like just like the Mudhorn crest on Din, 
he's got that fern right here on his yeah uh, he has a sickness that it's he became regardless of what his what Django who he was orphaned at a young age yeah he was alone he went we know that from being in Clone Wars he went through like a bounty hunter like he was in a gang of bounty hunters yeah but he reconnected with the Mandalorians and that's where the crest came from and he re-identified as being a Mandalorian yeah that's like a cool deep cut and he has he because he has the mythosaur on his shoulder mm -hmm. yeah that's but the crest is completely the signet is completely different Yep. I remember the very first podcast that we did, Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 1. And Don't bring I it up. I think we... I mean, if you could hear it. I mean, yeah, you right. probably couldn't yeah, hear me. No. Um, man, it's so much better now. Mm -hmm. There was some talk, perhaps argument, on whether or not you guys would like Boba Fett being in the show, and two, mm -hmm. if Boba Fett was in fact a Mandalorian. What if this show is has is has never been about Din Djarin, but has always been about Boba Fett just putting it out there are, are is this a, like a legit like how do i feel about that or is this just No a this is mind blowing moment oh my god moment because we i mean you think about it what was the episode with uh uh Lucy Wynn remember that gunslinger uh, at gunslinger. the end yeah and oh, we yeah. see Boba Fett's ching 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 well, ching, ching obviously that was that was Timothy like Oliver, that was Cobb Vance. right but it's teasing the fact that Boba I Fett because was always this there was always this talk about whether Boba Fett was always a real Mandalorian or not yeah know? well we always had a different understanding until we learned that it was a creed yes. so if you guys but we to didn't know, learn it was a creed until Favreau put that idea into our heads no no I, I get that um but if you're asking me if this show becomes about Boba Fett uh it I will don't want it, it, to. it will immediately go down but it's it, just it cool go, to think about. It, it will go so far down. Boba Fett, if you think about it, if you take it, harken back to the very beginning. This show is about me making correct predictions. This, this Harken uh, back to the very beginning when uh -huh. we saw the holiday special and we saw Boba Fett for the very first time. And we're like, holy crap, who is this person? I want to know more. And then we get him a little bit in Return of the Jedi. I try not to be like, I really try not to be People negative. Love and I used to be Boba negative. Fett. And I understand that. And there's not a whole lot to love about Boba Fett. And this show could be the first time that we have things to actually love about Boba Fett. Well, there you go. Because my dude doesn't do jack crap in right. the movies. But he didn't have He's the ominous. Time. Okay, He's look at ominous my shirt. Crap. Look at my shirt. I read the Phasma book. Uh huh. Amazing character. Uh huh. When you look at the movies, you're like, holy crap, why is she even She in the looks movies? cool, but she's pointless right. and dead. Right, twice. <laughs> so it's the same thing with Boba Fett. Now we're getting that backstory. It's like we're reading the book of Phasma, but we're reading the book of Boba Fett. By yeah. watching the no. show, yeah, I can and see he that. He is because the original Mandalorian. He is. She's the he's the first introduction to Mandalorians in general that we mm -hmm. ever saw. Anyway, it's just an idea. Back to <laughs> the, I was right. Recap. I was right. Mando asks. See, nobody's him, addressing it. Oh my gosh, Mando asks him who he is. He says, "Quote: Cobb Vanth, Marshal of Moss Palgo." Mando then demands that he takes off this Mandalorian armor. After the stare down, the whole ground begins to shake. A crate dragon has been ravaging the entire area. In dramatic fashion, the dragon swallows with just no effort at all an entire Bantha hole. Can we talk about the Rip. oh my god Those moment big old we Bantha saw. lips. Dude, poor Bantha. As soon as it started rumbling, I'm like, either it's an earthquake, a ship, or a crate dragon. Like, the crate dragon was my third option. I didn't go to crate dragon. I went to big ship or tank situation. I went to imp. I went to I something went to imp dragon imperial. Third. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was my third option, but it wasn't until I saw the sand that I'm like, crate dragon. Yeah, when you, it was like, I was like, oh, tremors. Yeah, Just a yeah. graboid. <laughs> Graboid, the yeah. spice must flow. I was thinking, yeah, Dune would have been, a, yeah, the big, the big giant worm. Uh, I, same thing. I was like, this could be Empire, or it could have been, um, whatever he was put in as Marshal for, like whatever he had to become Marshal for. Definitely, he was not surprised. What Kai was like, this again? He, yeah. Like, he, hmm. yeah, like he, I gotta. My go, dude gives him the go, fingers. Like, hang go on, I gotta listen. I gotta go do my. I don't have thing. time for you, Mandalorian, who's here to now apparently like duel me in the middle of the cantina. Yeah, literally. I this is my house. Attentive to, at that to moment, deal. I totally saw Kevin Bacon on the sidelines. Cameo. <sighs> A deal is struck between Cobb <laughs> and awesome. Mando. <laughs> that would have been awesome <laughs> to help kill the crate dragon and set their spotchka down. Jeebus. 
Sorry. This is the longest recap ever on the longest episode ever. But it was so good. The deal is to kill the crate dragon and to get the armor back. Traveling to the the crate dragon's nest, we find that Cod pulls up in a modified speeder using Anakin's pod racer. We think. I mean, it probably is. What? We think. What do you we, mean there's we no think? confirmation. How about the visual representation of the left or the right engine of Anakin Skywalker's pod racer? And the fact that he rides have we, side saddle. Have like, we seen have we seen episode one since we've seen this episode? The, the Dude, I don't need to see it. I got the, the same, toy right it's here. It's freaking thing. his pod racer. I'm just creating sits, suspense. Of course I think it's Anakin's I pod I love racer, that he okay? sits like it's just a giant engine and his like he's got like a modified swoop bike oh, it's like awesome. saddle and seat and controls, but sits off to the side of the thing. And the fact that he that John Favreau thought of that. Like that is such a cool Easter egg, you know. Yeah. Cod then explains how Cobb. he got Cobb then explains how he got Man, I want some fish and chips. Boba Fett's armor. The reason why he got it is because he was basically saved by Jawas and then he traded the crystals as we find out later in the episode for Can't the tell armor. Not. The ice cream machine is back. While pulling into the valley, they are confronted by a pack of massive, which are the dog-like creatures mm-hmm. that we see on their episode two. Wikipedia said that they could, they're known for two planets. I can't remember what the second one was, but uh, Tatooine is definitely one of them. Um, yeah, that's where we. I think we all remember him from was the Tuscan village scene. Yeah, yeah. episode two, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, and the Tusken Raiders. Mando once again strikes a deal involving the help of the Tusken people. The Tusken people bring them to the abandoned Sarlacc pit to see the dragon for themselves. After seeing the size of the crate dragon, Mando offers the help of the village because they simply know that they need more numbers to defeat the dragon. The village, of course, is not happy, and with having to work with the Sand people in particular. After, racists. Yeah, seriously. They were <laughs> like just, super racist. Yeah, they were just not happy about it. That's a common theme in Star Wars, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, and this is actually one of my favorite things of Mandalorian season one and two is we're seeing this intellectual side that we've always been painted the picture of their mindless beasts, mindless savages, beasts. And, and honestly, yeah. I think that's what Lucas was trying to go for. So Native American. If we can get Lucas on the on the show, which I think he's coming next Tuesday. I mean, he responded to our emails a couple yeah. of times. So, well, I've spoken to Timothy Zahn. <laughs> True. <laughs> Here we go. Facts. Facts. Here we go. Anyway, George so you- has. <laughs> he said he's going to get back to me. He's been reluctant. You know. You know. He's got. Listen. He he listened to the podcast and he the hated number it. one <laughs> podcast of all Star Wars podcasts rejected by Timothy Zahn this podcast he didn't reject us he simply said he is too busy to participate in podcasts at the moment and we know why because if you follow us on instagram i posted breaking news that the second book in oh the my God. second thrawn trilogy has been announced to you come out next year one. i haven't even finished the first one yeah i haven't either but it's just important because he was he didn't bs us he was like i'm busy back to the recap back to no i wanted to bring out my point because Lucas has a very strong conviction on how he wants his character development and stuff to go. He's always portrayed the Tuskins as like evil, you know, like taking mm-hmm. Anakin's mom and straight her up. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're very brutal. I don't think he would particularly like the way that Favreau portrayed them in this episode. I don't, I think, don't think so. I think that they got misidentified. Because and they, they abducted they were the, Anakin's mom and killed her. Yeah, but they But were, they established they were that the, they do that in this episode too. But yeah, and like it's it's a so hard it's not life. racism. It's, a it's just I don't want to work with them scene. because they raid us and kill us, and and that's what Mando says. He says it is true what they say about them. They are brutal, and then he also says they are raiders. Like that's what they and do. They say, they're it's pirates. A, it, they're brutal. It's a brutal life in the Dune Sea. Yeah, yeah. they have to be that way to survive. Yeah, it's true. And they're the everybody else are the people who moved in when they had already been living there, very Native American y style. Like Christopher Columbus moves in takes over and then they're savages Mm -hmm. they're brutal yeah but they're just doing what they need to survive in the land that they've already been living in for centuries sounds like you've seen that avatar movie with the blue people that you like so much fern gully (laughs) (laughs) oh my god james cameron's coming on the show next wednesday right i think so make sure you make sure you tell james that (laughs) it's become my favorite thing that you (laughs) <laughs> you like Fern Gully with better CG. <laughs> Whatever you say, I don't know. I was super mad at first, but now it's like the best thing ever. Okay, back 
to the recap. Back once, to America. <laughs> once again, the villagers, they're not happy like we've established because they've lost mothers, brothers, sons, daughters. They're raided. They got, yeah. It was they've, brutal. They, they've lost many of people um, due to the Tuscan raiders. But just as Mando explains, they have to work together to be able to kill the crate dragon themselves. After arriving at the nest of the crate dragon, they begin to bury bombs. After missing their first bob attempt, bob, <laughs> bob bomb. After Nintendo. missing, <laughs> after missing their first bomb attempt, Cobb and the Mando take to the sky to fight the crate dragon. This scene in particular oh, was, was just such a cool scene. It was super cool, and I liked that their jetpack sounded different. Yeah. When we were watching it tonight before Props we started recording, to Cobb for learning how to fly a jetpack, which flying rising phoenix having yeah. no problem, and he apparently like, can recreate that like rocket thing. Because he already shot one off. So he's like, oh, I got to go make one. Or buy well, one. we were kind of talking about that earlier, too. Is like, where are they getting those rockets? It's got to be something that's like pretty common. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like ammunition of some sort. It's a one shot deal, man. Apparently not. Well, he, he's good with it, too. He just drops that rangefinder. Oh, so you know, cool. I do like it the rangefinder. It was cool finder. seeing the rangefinder in, in effect. Yeah. Can we talk about how the fact that. Um, is this good? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. So in Tremors, you have to seek rocks for shelter. Yes. Dude, that crate dragon went <laughs> right up that mountain. He did not care about He's the like, rocks. what rock? Yeah. I got this. Yeah. He's just going straight up. And right he like the... appears like, imagine, at the like... top of a mountain and then over in the dune sea. Like, it's amazing. Dave Chappelle, like, screw y'all rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Screw your mountain. He didn't care about no Sarlacc. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't care. So they missed their their first bombing attack. They take to the sky to fight the crate dragon. Instead of fire, this dragon spits out acid to kill his foes. In a Drax like move. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Shout outs to Dave Filoni. Dude was like, guys, I've seen this in a movie before. Hey, uh, remember that <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Universe that I created? Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. I love. I love this part. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Drax is like the skin is <laughs> the skin is too hard from the outside. I must go from within to defeat the beast or whatever he says. Right? Doesn't make any he, he, sense. He the jumped. skin is the same thickness from the outside as it is the inside. Says, I know. That's what I told him. <laughs> so Ma Mando goes inside of the the crate dragon, and dude, the poor Banthas. Oh, Let's pour another one out for the Banthas in this episode. Dude, Banthas They're got some big old lips on. Them. <laughs> they just yeah. they got the bad end of the stick this episode, like. And there's there. Am I the only one who wants one now? I like, do want a bantha. They're so they're cute at the same time, and like I want to see like out of all the times they're they're really slow moving, and that's all we've ever seen. I love when the crate dragon is coming out the first time, and he eats the one sand person, and the and the bantha's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, like dad. He, he just moves like so slow, like he doesn't even care. Like if there's one time to move quickly, it's when there's a giant. Japanese speed bullet type train coming at you with teeth. Shout out Whoa. to whoever played Galaxy, uh, uh, dude, Star Wars, Star Wars Galaxy. Give us, give us the breakdown real quick. I played, you played, Russell played. The, this if is, this isn't somebody on the writing it's exactly team, exactly the cave. So from Star Wars. What Galaxies. makes me, what yeah. makes me laugh is like on the internet, everybody's like, oh, like this is straight from Kotor. I'm like. You're not wrong, but that's not but where you're it not, originated. But you're, but you're not right either. Like yeah. this was a galaxy Star Wars Galaxies thing. Is there's hunting so, crate dragons, yes. getting a crate dragon pearl, which yes. was like the most. It was a lot. It was um. It was when it the was crate, like the, the yeah, most like, when the pearl high dropped, selling thing. It was that like you could a gamble. Get. It wasn't yeah, you like, had to roll for it. Everyone wasn't yeah, going to get one. Right? When you would kill one, the loot would be a random gamble of like. You have, have a party like of 12 of people, <laughs> only one person would get that crate pearl. It would be, um, I, we went on a five, because there was different size crate dragons, and I'd been on some five-man ones and some 10-man ones, and I'm, I'm having trouble remembering, I mean, we're talking 2000 and what, 2006? Mm -hmm. Like, <sighs> yeah, at least, like, yeah. I can't remember, if, I don't think that game ever went up to anything that was 20-man, I think 10-man was the most, Yeah, maybe. that was, that was advanced in the day that I was in. Yeah, and, and, and it might really have only been five, I can't remember, but this, this was so Star Wars Galaxies, I mean, just oh, no yeah. ifs, ands, or buts. Even that, like Russell said, the cave, like, it was exactly the same. Yeah, you literally, you're outside it the was cave, such you start attacking. to the, like, to that, like, yeah, it was so cool. They finally kill the crate dragon. Our boy takes him out with Bro. his Ambin, fall, Ambin Pulse Phase Blaster, which 
his, his pulse bullets, rifle. Yeah, yeah, his bullets did nothing, but that stun baton thing at the end of it lit the entire guts. And we oh, established no, this. He was all was. up in them guts. Yeah, that was, yeah. we established this in, <laughs> I want to say like episode two, uh, we kind of had a callback, or it might have even been episode one. Where the electrical pulse of that rifle, that pulse rifle, is specifically designed for big game. Yeah, the sea walrus that he takes out in the first episode. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. What are those things called? Anyway, that's not important. But that is exactly what they're designed for, is, bi- is big game animal, and obviously yeah, he, the Krayt Dragon. He this lit would that be thing up in the inside. The biggest of game. So arming the bombs and allowing the Krayt Dragon to swallow him, he then plants the bombs and the Bantha inside. Flying out, he then blows up the Krayt Dragon. The great the crate dragon's pearl is then found by the Tuscan raider and the meat is harvested. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Big chunk of meat on the back of the speeder bike. Yeah. And I and I I think that's for baby Yoda. I think that's you food think? for both of them. I was wondering what that was. Because he's eating he, you know, they they both need food. Like, baby Yoda's gonna eat most steak. of it. And that you, you, yeah, I mean growing little boy, you know, hey, just because you're fifty years old doesn't mean, you know, the metabolism. Fifty one, sir. He's fifty one. Oh, or or going up to fifty one now? And I made a little joke earlier about the meat people. I mean, most likely they got that at Winn Dixie because Publix would have been way too much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's the beef. They tell you it's beef. It's actually crate dragon. It's actually what it is. They then find the pearl of the crate dragon once again. Complete shout outs in oh. our opinion to Star Wars Galaxies. No, Which, no way around it. I have to also bring a shout out to the EU because this does slightly make you wonder what's going to happen with the whole Boba Fett Mm tie-in. And also in the comics, Boba Fett creates himself a lightsaber, which instead of a kyber crystal is a crate dragon pearl refined down because a crate dragon curl pearl can be the giant rocks that it's eating can be kybers in them. Yada, yada, yada. He has a crate dragon pearl based lightsaber, which he duels with Darth Vader. That's obviously not going to be what happens. But it still kind of makes you wonder. He watched this all unfold. Yeah, yeah. he did. Well, and the whole he sees the pearl. Thing too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you're saying. So, it, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Something is definitely going to happen around this pearl, I feel like, this season. Because the way it, it was held up, I don't know. That could be the treasure. You don't think it's just a Suka moment and we're not going to see the egg or anything <sighs> like that again? It could just be my hopeful thinking because of knowing how elusive they were in Star Wars Galaxies. Like, this wasn't a random thing that you find. I it see, was very elusive. I see what you're saying. I just think that there's too many people in the universe in this timeline that already have lightsabers to worry about. Yeah, to more and, more and there's already a dark saber. Yeah. I'm probably wrong on this one, but I just thought it was interesting to bring up. Mando and Vanth shake hands because the deal is now done. The Crate Dragon is dead. Mando has Boba Fett's old armor. What's he going to do with it? And they hope that their paths cross again. And I do too. Mm-hmm. I really want to see. I hope he's back this season. Yeah. I want to see Timothy again. I want to see. That was really cool. Cobb. I want Vanth. Like, I really, really like the character. And Great I can't way wait. Of introduction of new character. And we were talking earlier today on the phone. We can't wait to see people start to cosplay Vanth. Because I it's already so easy. immediately am like, <gasps> I have an extra Boba Fett helmet. Now I want to make a Cobb Vanth because that's a very simple cosplay to make. Yeah, yeah super simple. And and it's going to be it's going to be canon. Obviously. Helmet on, helmet off. It still works. Mandalorian then rides off in the rusty speeder that he got from Pila into the distance. Tamora Morrison, a.k.a. Rex, <sighs> a.k.a. Boba Fett, possibly a.k.a. Django. What, clone. What's not going to be Django, but yeah, any clone. <laughs> Is watching, and the episode fades to black. So, yes, it's still technically a possibility that that could be Captain Rex. Yes, like, yeah, shaved so, beard. Yeah, he, well, the beard. Yeah, he could have shaved. So this we, is five years after we talked about. You don't know how old Boba is. I did the research. Boba uh-huh. should be between forty and fifty right now. Which, with the shaved beard, I think he could pull that age look off. And you got to remember, Alec Guinness aged like 20 years and, or 50 True. years and 20 years. So. Well, what I was telling Justin is with, if you're going to make, if you're going to take Tamora Morrison and cast him now and it not be Rex. But Rex should be we like know, 90 with that math. Yeah, Rex would be, I mean, he's not did, 90. This is five years after Return of the Jedi. Accelerated growth, yeah, though, and he was already super old. I don't okay, I guess age is irrelevant because we literally see him fighting in the the Battle of Endor. Maybe Rex is 
force sensitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's force sensitive at this point. <laughs> um, before we get into our hot takes from our Cantina listening post, is there anything else that you guys? I got a quick question. Up? I got a question for you guys. Okay, so. This is our first episode. How do you feel not having anyone, no Kara, no grief, no... Baby Yoda didn't do much either this episode no, either. I was, was wondering He that. was minimal. He was kind of just a bystander. No no info on Gideon, which we were left on such a like a bomb dropped at the end. And no information on time jump. I had a prediction uh-huh. that we were going to have a time jump, and this seemed like it was very much like the next week, the next day. But they didn't explain that. Like So, yeah. how, so how do you feel with all of those things missing cuz i do feel like that was missing honestly for me um i feel that if we do get an explanation of some sort of a time jump i i see what you're saying the reason why i don't feel that way is because now that they think that remember they think that he's taken care of they destroyed the tie fighter like he, gideon's not alive don't worry about that guy that's true they yeah that's true you they don't saying? realize anything about him his, his mission now is he said He's it been three quested. times yeah, in, this, in this episode. Find, yeah. I want what you have. Yeah, I got to get Baby Yoda back to his kind, right? That This is his main focus. So for me, I see I see what you're saying. Um, there were plenty of... There were more episodes than not without Kara, without grief. Mm-hmm. And this is no different than episode one, four chapter, four chapter two for me. Yeah, I felt like this was as great as this was. I felt like this did not continue the story. As much as this story could have been dropped anywhere in season one. I'm being a devil's advocate here. Mm. This story could have been dropped anywhere in season one because there were no stakes in this story. Nothing I, happened. I, I don't agree. We would have never been back to Tatooine if he wouldn't have been quested to find the Mandalorians. But there was nothing that ha- I'm I'm okay, I'm not I taking, get what you're I'm saying. Not yeah, not, a, not a lot happened, but the entire plot it's of this a episode bump along it's the a, road. it was a fantastic side story. I loved every bit of it. I'm just saying, how do you how feel? How can you say this was a side story when Boba Fett is revealed in this episode? It, it might not be a side story. How in the, is that a side it, story? Okay, it might not be a side story in the long term. Rex was revealed. But taking off Rex. from where season two ended, I feel like this did not continue the story. It could have been taking a role of starting a new story. How do you feel that it didn't continue what like we left off on, like... What is going to happen with this team? Because they made a whole two episodes to build this team, and now the team's gone. I just feel like they did a good job of establishing Mando has to do his thing, and Carr is going to stay on Navarro because now that the Empire's gone, Grief rebuilds Navarro. It was his city. It was taken over by the Empire. How am I projecting? Because nobody knows any of that. It's stated in the last episode of season one. No... I, I we will stop the podcast and pause it right now and we'll go play it. <laughs> and it's in the recap guys of the first one. I don't understand the question. I don't think that this is not a continuation. I think that the story left off exactly where it was left. They think that like wh- wh- like where do you think the story has to go? Like you answer I that question. Don't think it, don't take this as I dislike it. I'm no, just I, like, I'm, I'm not being, saying you you dislike it. I I would have liked to have seen some type of like uh the three of them are together like grief yes i would have liked that and too. like it's like okay well i have a lead on this i know something would have been nice to see like what where like a phone call how a the, transmission a anything, hologram yeah like yeah. anything would have been nice to see like how they went from that ending of that season to like now mando and the child are off on their own again for me that would have that would have like put a bow on the story to continue it like end that season but continue the same full story I didn't like how this was, and I'm saying this very, 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 like, trying to, like, be devil's advocate finding something wrong and something that, like, I've been so hyped about all day long because it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm, but I'm just talking. So that is the only downfall I feel of this episode. I would have personally liked to have seen the end of season one a little more seamlessly flow into season two in some way. Like you said, a transmission hologram would have been perfect. Yeah, I could have had something like that for sure. So I guess I can see where you're going with this, Justin. And if you look at other shows, especially like, you know, the whole monster of the week thing, which is obviously what episode or season one was kind of um, following that whole Mm -hmm. kind of um, template, if you will. Um, Because in episode one, season two, this one we just saw, 
you kind of expect this to be a continuation of the main plot and then by season two or three, if it's not a continuation episode, you get back to the whole monster of the week thing, mm-hmm. which does tie into the main plot. Which can but, be story building. Right. But it's on the sidelines. So I can see where you're coming from. But I think this harkens to that back to what, exactly what I said earlier. It could be story I think building this that we just entire don't get show, This entire show has been a buildup to Boba Fett. Because if you think uh-huh. about Pedro Pascal... The whole drama that's going on with him not even wanting to do it anymore because he can't take his helmet off, you know, and him going over John Favreau and Dave Filoni's head and them not liking it. So he's basically out of the show. I don't know if it was a way of editing to make this show about Boba Fett or if it was always about Boba Fett. But when this show was announced, everybody's mind went straight to Boba Fett. And I think what you liked, Connor, was that it wasn't initially yeah i'm not interested in a but show that's all about boba fett it's not going to be about boba fett it's going to be about the child but boba fett is going to be the main antagonist mm-hmm. i could see him as being an antagonist to to answer your you brought up a good point with the monster theme there are certain episodes in season one like the prisoner that do almost zero for world building mm-hmm. that is an episode where mando's like i live in this universe i need money to survive let all me right. go do this job real quick It does nothing for Baby Yoda. We really don't learn a lot about the crew. We just learn that, yeah, before he was a bounty hunter, he was a simple thief, a crime lord, whatever. This was another Din adventure. I don't think so because there was something that directly implored him to his quest, which is for the child. Yeah, I I do see that, but I just, there was not much, I should say, screen time of anybody else except Din. But it could be, it could also be. This is the first episode, and you look back four episodes from now, you're like, oh, I see exactly why they were building. So it just could be we don't get it yet. And I wonder if you feel that way if this was first episode of the entire show. You know what I mean? Like, almost like we said, you could almost no, this take... this would be an amazing first episode. That's, that's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> like it could, And it, it wasn't a first... Like you said, it's Devil's Advocate. You loved the episode. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be divisive and think of a different angle yeah. to think about the episode with for conversational sake. Well, now that our blood pressure is all through the roof. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, anything else? Now that we've seen what we've seen, where do we think Tamora Morrison comes back into it? I think... Because we, we have to bring that logically, up. Logically, all of us think he's boba without his armor in my head boba shed his armor in the sarlacc pit because it's all acid stained and messed up more than return of the jedi in my head he shed the armor which was protecting him somehow escaped that's what i think i think that yeah i mean i think that he's definitely a main part of the story and i feel like he's going to be a bigger part of the story than we're giving him credit for um, of course, it could all be a ruse, and it could actually be Rax. I mean, Rax. Rex? I keep saying Rax. Who is Rax? Rax. Rax from, uh, Rax. from Aftermath. Yeah. <laughs> right? I yeah, mean, but, but Rax. I get what, yeah, Rex. Yeah, yeah. They're he close. Could be, I mean, it's one letter off. It's one yeah. letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, we've said before, he could literally be any clone. Yeah. Because he's also shaved head and scarred up, talk about messed, his... fa- messed up face. Is it a it's hard stick? to pinpoint his age. Is that what it is? A gaffy stick? He had, the, he had the gaffy stick and he had the Tuscan Marksman rifle, which has a specific name and it was in the first remake of Battlefront. It was like one of the side items you got. Um, like a single load long distance rifle, right? Yeah, it's like they more... They pick off a pod racer in yeah, you episode know. one. Guys, I think it is a perfect time to head over to the cantina listening post and we are going to hear some of our fulcrum information official patrons only yes so these uh patrons once again they are sending in their fulcrum information and it is their hot take and what they thought about the episode and the first one that we are getting is chris machado from the fomo cast all right so just finished the uh first episode of season two the marshall um, amazing way to start the show. Uh, Cobb, Vance was an amazing character. I love the way they played it into it. Uh, they didn't let you think that he was a Mandalorian for the entire episode. They just came out right away and basically said, yeah, I'm not a real Mandalorian. Yes. I just yeah, found really or point. bought this armor, quote unquote. Um, I also like the details they put with the Tuscan Raider. My favorite part actually was Tuscan Raider cleaning the bandit's teeth. Like, it was 
brushing the teeth. I don't know, like his, his pet, but it's his friend kind of thing still. So that was pretty cool. Um, and the humanization of him last mm-hmm. season was pretty epic. Totally. Uh, the start of it, I liked that they got that out of the way. Yeah, that, that's something we've talked about a lot is the light that they're bringing to Tuscan Raiders mm-hmm. more than... They're not mindless idiots. Yeah, exactly. It was exactly how the trailer showed, but it was um, a little bit more than we, we knew what it was about. And then even even the way that they portrayed the scene uh, with the Crate Dragon was pretty intense because it, it, it had all the movie qualities you would expect from like a motion picture. And Dude, that's a really good point that I did not think about. Like if that's the CG, a, yeah. like the special effects, holy crap. Yeah, if that's not like... And there there was a lot of things like um, we talked about John doing this episode. The scene in particular, kind of like what he's saying, and I think he's getting at as well as not only the CG, but it, he said it's done in a, in a movie way, a cinematic kind mm-hmm. of way, is when Cobb takes off that helmet and when it kind of like slams to the ground, the camera like zooms in. And, you know, you, you just get that still. You you understand, mm-hmm. like, this is an important scene. And there's so much about this episode that is cinematic feeling. And no doubt that's because of I John. can't wait to see a gallery, too. And, like, yes, the volume. Exactly. Like, how, how did they make the scale of what they shot in this first episode? Is like, the gallery bigger now? Yeah. Or gallery. Is the... Uh, the volume. The volume bigger now? Yeah, exactly. And they literally did it. Continue, Chris. You know, for a one episode. Thank you for pausing us. Uh, long pausing run on Chris. the first episode, which I did appreciate because it gave you time to take everything in. Don't give me And then leaving it on the end with we don't know who it is. Obviously, he's a clown. He's a clown. So we don't know if it's Boba Fett. He has a scar on his face. So, I mean, it, the, it, Get it out. the possibilities are in one. Did Rex so, have a scar? Amazing start. Uh oh. Um, the okay. hype was and the wait was so worth it, and um, I can't wait to see what we have in store for next week. I I hear a lot of people with the battle of who it is. I think people want to think it's Boba, but you also have that asterisk yeah. floating. He could be anybody. He's could literally anybody. the basis of all clones. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. Um. Yeah. Biggest point that I definitely like that Chris brought out was cinematic. the cinematic feel of the episode was, I think, heads above other episodes. Like, there was a, a scale that this Crate Dragon brought to the episode that we didn't have in other episodes mm-hmm. because we were never involved with anything that big, literally. So, I like that point. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about visual poetry again. So, that okay. moment we see Boba. Uh-huh. What do we see behind him in the uh, in the horizon? The sky is Duncan <laughs> McLeod. Duncan what? McLeod. <laughs> it's a yeah. It's a thing between him and Chris oh, okay. Connor McLeod. Justin. Anyway. Ah. Yeah. There you go. You. Duncan. Anyway, twin sons. Yes. So what do we see at the very beginning of the Star Wars saga? Luke looking looking off into the horizon with the double suns. Twin sons. Twin mm-hmm. sons. We see Ray at the end of the sequel trilogy with the twin the sons. callbacks. Yeah. All these callbacks, which they always happen in some like visual storytelling moment. There's something bigger here that Favreau is trying to show us with Boba Fett being revealed or clone, whoever he is. Mm-hmm. Something in that shot is extremely important to the future of this show. And I'm saying it here right now on this podcast. It's going to have bigger implications than you're giving it credit for. I think it's just artistic like callbacks to what grounds you in the universe could be <laughs> our next call is from jonathan coon now jonathan i'm very excited to hear if you want you to have job, to say. jonathan listen come on down I, we are he'll gonna have jonathan this. on the podcast he'll get this because i asked him if he wanted a job because i had the wrong person's name oh okay there you go <laughs> if you're looking for a job send me your license first off i just wanted to say what an amazing episode it was awesome watching it for my third time Mm-hmm. Anyhow, um, I thought it was Us really too. cool. We got some cool insight into Mando's thought process because at first, when he sees Vance with the armor, he's like, "Hey, I'm going to need that armor back." And when there wasn't really like an easy solution, it was like, "Well, I'm just going to pretty much take it from you." But then when the dragon comes in, um, Vance offers another solution for Mando to get the armor back, 
And even though it was riskier for Mando, he could have just been like, no, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to take it from you. Um, he chooses to do something that's riskier for him and more dangerous for him, but keeps everyone alive. And, you know, now he's got another place that maybe he can go to. And you know, that's like a secure place for him where he's welcome. So I thought that was interesting just to see how, how he was willing to Bend. take a risk. Yeah, there's... That's a great point. I yeah, mean, yeah, It just shows that Din Djarin's... I don't know if he was doing it for the armor or he was doing it because this town needed help. I mean, a freaking Krayt dragon is terrorizing the town. And... It's not the first time he's wanted to help a town of yeah. distrodden people. And I think he just was like, oh, all right, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. I'm going to help the town and I'm going to get my armor back, or Mandalorian's armor back. It, it, yeah, and like Jonathan's saying, it's, it's, it's an attestament to his thought process of not only do I know how to get what I want, but it shows the human side of Din of oh, yeah. helping. He's a good guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good guy, Din. I definitely like that. Good guy, Din. We need to start that. Just to avoid, you know, just killing somebody to, to accomplish what he wanted. So cool episode. Um, awesome, awesome development. So can't wait to see what, what they have next. Thank you, Fulcrum Jonathan, for that information. That Once was really again, good. It opened me- up all these, like, thoughts avenue pathways after i heard his little explanation there um and again it it, i don't know if you guys want to talk about potentially where season two could go a little bit um but it's obvious that pedro pascal is not going to be the actor anymore so Mm -hmm. someone is going to be underneath that armor whether it's dinjarin lookalike or someone else under the armor or are we going to transition to a whole other character what it's possible it's, it's, I don't think that's possible. Why not? Why not? Because it's called the Mandalorian. He's well, still doing all the voice acting. There's a lot acting. of yeah, and he's still doing the voice acting. There's a lot of Mandalorians. I, I'm just saying. It, okay, let that's me, my let, opinion. That sounded mean. Yes, let me rephrase that. <laughs> is it likely? I don't think so. Could it happen? Yes. Where do you think this season two is going to go? I think that it will end with a more clear direction of him that has given him more force wielders we are going to find some sort of a Jedi okay. by the end of this season. It could be a mm. cliffhanger where he finally has a beat on whether it be Ahsoka, Ezra, Luke, whatever the case may be. Going along with what you're saying, I think they're with the reveal of the dark saber, you can't have the dark saber without some sort of match against it. Yeah. Whatever that will be. It could be Din in his armor. I said that before. Right. Beskar armor, the entire point of it is to deflect lightsaber blades. It could be a melee of Din and a vibro knife and a pistol against Gideon with his untrained darksaber. I don't know. Yeah. But the po- I think it is going to build to the climax of some type of darksaber battle. Yeah. I think the way that season one ended. I am um, the cooking show where you have Favreau and Filoni cooking together. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that in one. In that on episode, Netflix. I'm pretty sure Favreau goes on and on and on about this scene in Rebels where it's always my mic. There you go. Where um, Sabine and uh-huh. Kanan are fighting and training, and he's like, yeah, "I yeah, love yeah. that." I love that dialogue too. Yeah, and yeah. he. I think. I mean, again, this is all my opinion and kind of my intuition, but I'm Magistrate's thinking he opinion. kind of wants. Yeah, which holds a lot of weight. It does <laughs> he kind of wants that in live action? So maybe you're right, Justin. Maybe there's going to be some sort of climax where mm-hmm. there is a when I'm involved one on one. Clean yourself off. Um, one on one, dark saber and and. Uh, yeah, anyway. No. I, I totally forgot where I was going no, with no, no, this. No, no, no. I, I got where you were going and because that was like a that was an that was a part of that season that subverted from the Jedi thing and we get this Mandalorian which is Sabine and she's now just as strong right as Kanan, right? right so the, right. the the subversion of Man of Mando, Din being the strongest Mando, we have other Mandos in the universe. We don't know if Bo's dead. We have Sabine. We have obviously right. what we hope is Boba Fett, whatever the case may right, be. Right, right. And I do think that there are other people that can play a role and help push the story along, but I do not want any character yeah. in the Star Wars universe to ever outshadow and outplay Din. Gotcha. Who's the Mandalorian? I agree. Because that, that the entire point of so the show... So you want the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, whether he's actually under there or not, voice acting or not, to be Mandalore the Great. Wait, what? 
This is so you you think that we're gonna get to a point where we reestablish Mandalore? Why not? The the show is called The Mandalorian, so why not them reestablish their? It doesn't sound like you want him to be I mean, Mandalore I feel the like, Great. I feel like that could be like seven seasons in a yeah, possibility. Yeah, ten, ten but seasons. Yeah, that's I don't like. Feel like that's like a season two, episode one. I'm just saying. Theory. No, I I would like that. I you would totally what? agree. You know what? Write this down. Because if we are ten years from now and the show's still going and Russell nailed this, yeah, exactly. I, 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 I would, it. I would love him I to like be Mandalorian. To come, I the like great. to speculate. I mean, it's cool That's to kind good, of think I, about a, where you know the what? journey of how he became Mandalore the Great. And I how give you props. Mandalore the Great killed Jedi. I, mean, I yeah. give you props for thinking like not short term of like two or three seasons, but like long distance, like canon changing. That's an awesome theory. I, I like would it. totally give him Mandalore the Great. Do we have time for another? Let's yeah, do one. No, we, let's yeah, do we, one we do more. have one more. We let's do. do one. We have time. We have all the time in the world, my friends. We are going to play our last fulcrum transmission. No, do we have time for one more because of all the hundreds that were left for us? I had to pick the best <sighs> oh three. My gosh, you're ruining it. Okay, I had to pick the best three. All right, Anthony. Um, he sent us one. This one's a little bit Tony! longer. One. Oh, so, Tony two. Tony two. Sorry, Anthony. If you don't like Tony, we have another Anthony. He doesn't like Tony. He you're did say both, Anthony. You're both Tony now. So <laughs> he did say Anthony. <laughs> All right, Anthony, we're going to play yours. I'll do my con con cantina crew. My name's Anthony, and maybe you know me better than that Twitterverse. I'm a real farm boy and a proud Patreon of your show. So tonight, we're talking, yins are talking, Mandalorian. Season 2, Chapter 9. And want some listener input and thoughts. Well, I'm a long-time listener of podcasts, and I'm a long-time fan of Star Wars. And the story that we was just told, I've never had an expect or a want from anything from a Star Wars story that's told to me, because I know that I... I've been, I love everything that is Star Wars. I know that these. Oh, I paused it by mistake. That we was just told. I did like what he said there. I found, I found where I left off is he likes uh, being told a story that he's not expecting. Yeah. yeah. Which is where he, he's, he was going with that point. I really do like that too. So he likes Last Jedi. I've never had an Don't bring that or up. He, he likes all Star Wars. There you go. The Star Wars story that's told to me because I know that I, I've been I love everything that is Star Wars. I know that these these stories, as much as we can love them, they're not ours. So I don't have a want or an expect. But it's a good point. It it is a good point because that's something that we all three suffer mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Is we all have an expectation. Make it what I want. Yeah, yeah, make it what we want. If Din doesn't become manually great, I hate this show. <laughs> all right. Hey, <laughs> you're entitled to that. And if Boba Fett outshines Din, I hate the show. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say something else. Never mind. Oh no. <laughs> play the show, Tony. Play, continue. Play Tony. Thank you, Anthony. See, you know what? I'm gonna message Anthony. I'm gonna be like, he, he, like I said, he said Anthony. So we're we're sticking with Anthony. People like to be called what they like to be this called. Exactly. Just went a whole other different way, and we're only at the ninth chapter so far. Mm -hmm. True. All of that. I can't say enough how excited I was to watch everything that we were told. Would have never guessed, and I know there were rumors before, and I didn't buy into any one of them, but I was floored. And we talked about rumors so many times on this show. Anthony with all the points. Yeah, seriously. And the, and and when the first time I listened to the to the this transmission, I I don't know why I didn't catch that, but we had multiple episodes that were solely well, about two episodes that were solely based around rumors for episode 2. Right. And one thing that we always said is rumor we got this covered. Rumor screen rant. Like nothing was ever from Disney. Except for the Tamora Morrison showed up on the IDMB mm -hmm. for Mandalorian Season 2. It's just a really great point yeah. that even though he wasn't buying into him, he was still surprised. And I think all of us were still surprised. We were like tentatively yeah. 
we're expectations. Just not setting setting ourselves setting ourselves up for expectations to be something specific. After we finish the transmission, remind me to come back to the point of how this episode ended with you specifically. I don't want to. No, you don't want to, but we're Tony listen. Long pause. Here we go. As many of our friends were to see to really get to see a character we was told in the story from the novel Long right pause. in front of us, Cobb Vance. Cobb Vance, yeah. Who'd have figured? Justin. It might have changed the story a little bit from the aftermath in Luge, but... Yeah, I noticed that too. Holy mm-hmm. force. Yeah, and and you we were talking about that on the phone today, and, and Anthony brought it out that the interludes are a little bit different. Which, okay, lis- watching the show back, yeah, it could have just been Cobb's version that he told mm-hmm. Armando. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I traded for some Jawas. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could have been a totally fabricated, not fabricated, but like altered story like for the point of who he was talking to, which is a human trait that people do. And we see in the gallery, we see that John has a knowledge, but it's nothing that any of us would consider a deep knowledge when uh, um, Dave is kind of telling him about the scene with C-3PO in the head. Oh, that's a deep cut. Yeah, that's a deep cut. And it's like, n- no, that's no, like just not. a regular part of the movie. That's you not a deep Dave cut. You know Dave Filoni was a like consultant on this episode. Yeah, exactly. And that was my point. Oh, yeah. And that's a great point that Anthony brings out is like, this is so deep and you called it out and not a lot of people yes. have read the aftermath series and we've been telling people for a yes. long time now read it if you're missing out and you don't feel like there's star wars content out there trust us there is mm-hmm. read these new canon books however you want to read them that's the first trilogy book of canon that we've had and since then the only one that has came out is what's currently coming out which is timothy zahn who i've talked to your best friends. The number one rejected podcast <laughs> by Timothy Zahn. He didn't reject us. He's just too busy at the moment. Well, because he's, he's writing talk- a book. He still talked to me. He did. <laughs> Let us finish with this transmission with Anthony. Send it, Anthony. Long pause. I think cannot just imagine what's coming up next. But there it is. That's my thoughts. <laughs> totally floored. I'm still picking myself up. For- and I'm looking forward to hopefully awesome. other listeners. A corn con Tina sending in some messages like me and cannot wait. I got a reserved spot in my playlist for Thank the next you. episode coming up. Woohoo. Dude, it left us floored too. Until your next episode. Oh, sorry. Thank you. For real. Like May this... the force be with all of you. <laughs> I'll see you on the radio. You got to let my man finish, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> you're, the, uh-huh. you're the worst interrupter. Anthony, long pause. We really, truly appreciate the message. I think. Listen, Chris had some good information. Jonathan had some good information. Anthony brought out points. A solid and, take. And I, and I played his last on purpose, and it was for that that very last part, which was he purposefully brought out the aftermath series. Mm-hmm. And we've we've talked about it before. We don't have to talk about it again. But there's just so much canon information, and if this is where newer star wars is going we have kenobi show coming up where they're going to start pulling things from canon books because canon is being rewritten i love that idea yeah i'm I'm all for it how cool is it that they pulled something from an interlude of a book yeah Yeah, literally like not even like they didn't take a main character from a book they didn't take a side story from a book it's an interlude across three books that is broken up and like here's a page or two yeah read 10 12 chapters here's another page yeah, yeah, and like yeah. that is what they pulled out of that book to like now make this amazing character. I love that. That's such a deep cut. Yeah, but a a Dave Filoni style thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And that and that's like who we said. Is, who else was there that were in the interludes besides the the cult that was the kids uh that were trying to get the uh Vader saber. Yeah, and that and that was that was like when we talked about this on the last episode. That's for some reason that's where my mind went to straight yeah. is because that interlude was the thing that I remembered most was yeah. that little Sith cult and they ended up getting Darth Vader's lightsaber. They're like um, underground trader. Yeah, yeah. Like and that kind of like was going almost towards that like steampunk type of thing that we're getting with the they Nile. Were Coruscant. In, yeah, they're yeah, like exactly. little kids in the sewers of Coruscant. 
Guys, once wow. again, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Anthony, for your Fulcum transmissions over here at the Cantina Listening Post. We very much appreciate it, My guys. favorite part of the show, honestly. Yeah, no, that was fun. And we, we've done hot takes before, but having something so particular where they can call that number and we, we have this topic that's they're going to give us their thoughts about the episode that we're talking about. We have seven more episodes where we're going to be getting these hot mm -hmm. takes from more people, guys. So very much appreciate it, guys. Seriously, that, if you that want was the awesome. number, join our Patreon. Yes, it is Patreon for the Cantina listening post that is for the Patreon. Guys, before we head into news, I only had one thing written oh God, to, written news for too. news. Yeah, th there's just so much. Like, There's a lot of toy news, and I didn't want to get into all the toy news. The biggest piece of news is, and this is super important, my wife's favorite artist is Thomas Kincaid. For real? He is That's famous. Her favorite artist? He is famous for all Thomas of his... I have a Thomas Kincaid painting hanging in my hallway. It, consider it gone because she will steal it from you now. It's huge. She loves his stuff because she's the such painter a... painter of light yes. is his tag. And he's such a... Uh, he does. He's famous for mostly his Disney stuff. What? And how can you have... Well, uh, okay... To me, I know him mostly for his Disney stuff. Okay. I, obviously, he paints more than just Disney, but he is licensed by Disney to paint their stuff. Like, he has tons of, of Disney stuff. He has an entire Mandalorian series that just came out. Holy crap. Yes. He does Mandalorian. I need to see that. Yeah. The pictures are really, really cool. They're real paintings. Well, they're printings of real paintings, but I think they still print them on canvas. They mm -hmm. come with frames. Not super cheap, but... Super, super cool. That was really... Obviously, that was just Mandalorian-specific. I had to bring that up. The only thing I have to bring up in news is uh, Halo Infinite losing its game director again. again. Dude. Ugh, don't have high hopes for this game. No. It, it's really sad. Um, with more news, it's not a delay, but this one is. Cyberpunk got delayed again. I saw that. But it's only like three weeks or something. Which, there's been talks about they're trying to get Dr. Disrespect in the game. I don't Dude. know if you saw that. So people are saying like that's what the... Cause oh, they to put, be like a CG person they, character Yeah, in because they put Dr. Disrespect in uh, Rogue Company. So this new third-person shooter came out, Tactic Game. And he's like, guys, I love this game. I used to be a, a map designer for Call of Duty. Let me design you a map and put me in the game. And they said, okay, you have 24 hours. If we like your map, we will put it in the game. They liked his map. It's in the game. It's hmm. called The Arena. It's his map hmm. and his character skin. You can purchase it, and it's in the game. And now there have been other talks. We already know that Keanu Reeves is in Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. That yeah, air putting launched the game. Exactly. Yeah. Same. Super disappointing about Halo, though. Um, I've been looking forward to that game. It, it's like you said, to lose another game developer at three four three director of or director. Game. Yeah. That, that's not good. That that can't be a recipe for good no. things to come. Halo has been on a downward slide since Reach. We're still gonna buy it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. Because it's Halo. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Episode one, chapter one. Oh my god, the start chapter of something nine. amazing. Seven more. Chapter episodes. nine, thank you. Yes, chapter nine. Uh the Marshall. Um Obviously, was... one thing that I liked about the most that we just did is I feel that all three of us have a different direction of where we think slash want the show's going to go. And if that is not a testament to, we don't know. Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's a really good thing. It's making this conversation. This is why people seek out podcasts. Like, people want this information. They want ideas. They want theories. And if we are all not disagreeing, it's just we all have different ideas. Like yep. that's that's a really cool thing. So hopefully it continues to go in that type of direction. I said like ten times, I don't want Boba Fett in this show. Yeah. The way they like with Cobb Vanth and like possibly Boba Fett, mm -hmm. Tamar Morrison scene, I'm like, God dang it, I didn't want this and now I want it. Now I want it. Yeah. Full like, send. Russell. Yeah. I mean, you know where my opinion is. I just I think that the world of Star Wars and the fans of Star Wars just have been thirsting and been so dehydrated for good content. Yeah, true. That I've been so content with not really caring where the show is going because they're just self-contained so good. Each episode is so good. It's like, finally, I'm getting some Star Wars water. You know, I'm in a yeah. Tatooine's desert and I'm so dehydrated and each episode is perfect. that's an oxymoron yeah it's a metaphor you can't be in a desert and have so much water 
Well, with each episode, I can. It's the stinky water that the Tuscan Raiders give you. Oh, and the you gas don't water. Do you expect me to drink this? Yeah, exactly. Smoky gas water. So anyways. Looks thinking, like something the Taken would have in Destiny. So not knowing or caring, I guess, where it's going to go because each episode is just so dang good. Yes. Is a testament to how good this show is. Guys. It's good. I was your boy. It's Concon. And of course, the man sitting across from me. The PR man himself. Jay Breezy. And our returning guest. Russell Allen. Magister. We will see Magistrate. You guys next time. Mm-hmm.